The 2020 Major League Baseball season is underway, and there are a lot of extremely talented rookies that are going to be making their way into the league or already starting on the Major League rosters this year that you need to keep an eye out. So in today's video, I'm going to give you 11 rookies that you need to watch out for in the 2020 MLB season, guys that can have a chance to win the Rookie of the Year, guys that maybe have a chance to do a little bit more, guys who are making a big impact. So as always, if you guys do enjoy this video, you like the content that you're seeing, make sure to drop a like. That's the best way to show your support. Subscribe if you're new and you enjoy the content. If you love baseball, click that sub button. Join the team. Remember to get in the comment section down below. Let me know if there's any rookies that I maybe missed out on. I'm not giving enough love to. Who do you think could be a dark horse rookie of the year candidate? Drop me a follow on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, YouTube, all the stuff. Links are in the description down below as always. And I want to let you guys know that today's video is sponsored by PIA VPN, but we'll hear back from them in a little bit. So on to our list of the 11 rookies that you need to watch out for in the 2020 season. So let's get today's video started off with an absolute banger of a rookie, and that is going to be Luis Robert or Robert. I think you can pronounce it both ways. I'm going to call him Robert though, because that's how he says it in a video. They say it in Cuba. Regardless, he's a beast. This guy has some silly, silly tools in Major League Baseball. When he connects with the baseball, it is going a very, very far way at very, very high speeds. He is a freak of nature at the plate. Now, he does swing and miss a little bit. That can be a concerning, but when he does make contact, he absolutely makes it count and still is able to hit for a high average while hitting for crazy power. He's also ridiculously fast around the bases, really strong arm in the outfield. He's a pretty decent center fielder as well. Luis Robert essentially is a five tool player. In fact, you know what? I'll call him a five tool player. He's that good. As you've seen, he's a starting center fielder for the White Sox this season in 2020, and he's expected to probably win the rookie of the year in the American League. He was my pick. He's a lot of other people's picks. Unbelievably talented. We're seeing some stuff here that can be special in the future, and you should really watch out for him in 2020. He's on an exciting White Sox team. He's going to be a big reason for their success. Luis Robert is a player to watch in 2020 for sure. For the second rookie in today's video, we're talking about Mackenzie Gore, who is the number five prospect in all of baseball, number one prospect in the Padres organization. Now, Mackenzie Gore is not starting the season off on the Major League roster, but I expect the Padres at some point to call him up because he is Major League Baseball ready at only 21 years of age. Pretty big left-handed pitcher, 6'2", 197, really good fastball, really good curveball, really good slider, really good changeup, great control. He's an overall awesome looking pitcher, about as can't miss as you can find on the mound from the left-hand side. He was drafted by the Padres in 2017 out of high school, and he is basically ready to be at the Major League level right now. He is something special. This has been the guy that everyone has circled on their list, the next big pitching prospect. Prospect. Mackenzie Gore has something special. He's got that skill. He's got the finesse. He's got the power. I'm so excited to see this guy get called up. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And I think that time's coming soon. Mackenzie Gore in 2020, expect him on the Padres. And when he does, make sure you're watching his starts. The kid's special. For the third rookie you need to watch out for in 2020, let's go to the Oakland A's and talk about their left handed pitching prospect, Jesus Lazardo. Lazardo is the number 12 prospect in all of baseball. And we saw a little glimmer of what he's got last year in the 2019 season. You might remember in the playoff game against the Rays, he came in and pretty much shut the door. He was pretty filthy on the mound. Awesome fastball with a lot of life and movement on it. The slider is absolutely devastating, but that's not even his best pitch. The changeup is just disgusting from him. Now, he doesn't have a big frame, six foot 218. He has battled some injury issues and he was battling the coronavirus a little bit. But when Jesus Cesardo is healthy and back on the mound for the Oakland A's, he is going to be great for them. He is their future ace. He's their future number one. The kid has got so much talent, nasty stuff on the mound, good head between his shoulders. I'm really excited to see what he can do in the 2020 season now that he's healthy because what we saw last year in the slight glimpse was really, really promising. Filthy, filthy stuff from Jesus Lazardo. For the fourth rookie of today's video, we're staying out in the AL West. This time I'm talking about Houston Astros pitching prospect Forrest Whitley. It is very much expected that Forrest Whitley is going to get a significant amount of starts in the 2020 season. The Houston Astros rotation just isn't very strong. And for Whitley, who's got a lot of talent, it's about time he shows us what he's got. Feels like we've been waiting for him forever. That being said though, while he hasn't come up through the system as quickly as we thought, doesn't mean that he's someone who still isn't special. Awesome fastball with some sinking action. He throws absolute heat, really nice curveball slider changeup. His control can be shaky at times, but he has got plus stuff where he can make you swing and miss at balls, make you chase pitches that you thought you were going to be able to hit. His stuff is gross, really, really nasty, especially with that sink to his fastball. Now, similar to some of these pitchers, he does have some injury issues in the past, and he had been suspended 50 games for violating the minor league drug program. But if he can stay healthy in the 2020 season, I fully expect him to make an impact for the Astros at the back end of the rotation. He doesn't have to have all the pressure. He doesn't need all the weight on his shoulders. He can be the guy who pitches every five days, and you're just kind of excited to watch him out there because he's so young and has crazy stuff. He's lanky, six foot seven, 238, crazy long arms. And I think he's going to be able to come up this year for the Astros and make a difference for them on the mound. Another really special town. Man, the AL West is loaded because at the number five spot, we got another player from the AL West. This time it's going to be Joe Adele of the Los Angeles Angels. Now, Joe Adele is another one of these guys who is not going to start the season from what it looks like on the major league roster. But let me tell you right now, he is definitely ready and capable to be on this team. A player that is built very, very similarly to Luis Robert. 
Robert. Big swing and miss potential, but crazy amounts of power, unbelievable athlete, good in the outfield. Joe Adele, to me, a few years ago, I was like, he's Mike Trout light. Like, if you were going to compare guys in the minors right now to who could be the next Mike Trout, you're looking at Luis Robert and Joe Adele. These guys, both of them, are unbelievably talented. Adele was drafted in 2017 out of high school, 10th overall pick by the Angels, and has absolutely flown through their minor leagues. Big physical dude, five tool threat without a doubt. He can definitely play center field, but it's most likely that he will move to a corner position considering Mike Trout's there. Good strong arm, great hitting. I like the build of Joe Adele. I think he's going to be really good. And then just imagine that lineup. You're going to have Rendon, Trout, Otani, and now Joe Adele. That team's scary. Finally, out of the American League West, let's talk about the sixth rookie in today's video. Pitcher for the Kansas City Royals, Brady Singer. Singer was drafted in 2018 out of the University of Florida, and he showed during the College World Series as a sophomore, he is really good. Drafted in 2018, 18th overall. As you can tell, he's flown through the system, and it was announced just a few days ago that Brady Singer would be starting, basically opening weekend. Now, Singer is not one of these stereotypical top prospects who's going to be throwing 99 miles an hour with a power, power slider and just coming at you with heat. He throws about mid to low 90s. It has some sync to his fastball. His four seam moves, obviously, a little bit more than his sinker, but he never really goes above like that 96 territory. The slider is really strong. It's a great second pitch, and he's still developing a third pitch right now a little bit. His changeup definitely needs a little bit of work, but those two pitches that he does have, plus that sinking fastball, has been extremely effective for him in the minors. And for the Royals, who pretty much don't have a lot to get excited about in 2020, at least you got Brady Singer, 23 years old, rookie is going to be the future of this team from the pitching side. If you're a Royals fan, you got to be excited. And honestly, if you're a fan of baseball, you should be excited because now you can watch this guy every five days and see a really talented kid out there on the mound. So Brady Singer for me, the sixth rookie you need to watch out for in 2020. Now let's hear from our sponsor, PIA VPN. Private internet access or PIA as we know it is the leading no log VPN service. Why would that be important to you watching a baseball video? MLB TV. We know about blackouts. They're pesky. They're annoying. You can't watch your local teams. You got PIA VPN with you. You are going to be able to watch your local team through MLB TV. So listen up because I got some great information for you. PIA has been around the block. They were founded in 2010 and they won PC Mag Editor's Choice in 2020, so you know it's good. They have unlimited access to over 3,300 servers in 30 different countries so that you can watch MLB TV without having to deal with blackouts. It works on Windows, Mac, Apple, Amazon Fire Stick, Android, whatever you need, they got it. They have 24-7 live chat, so if you're having difficulty using it, they can walk you through it. 30-day money-back guaranteed. They're feeling confident about their product. You always love that. And the price is unbeatable. Right now, for viewers of my channel, they're giving you guys a special offer, a special deal. Click the link in the description down below. Go to PIA's website. You make a purchase with them through that link, you're going to save yourself even more money on a great VPN service. Multiple pay options. You can stream up to 10 devices at once with PIA VPN. It seems like a no-brainer, especially if you're a baseball fan, you want to watch multiple games, you want to watch the game in your city that you don't have access to normally, so make sure you check the link in the description down below. Go support PIA VPN for helping support this channel, and go watch any games on MLB TV you want. Next up on our list, we've got relief pitcher, maybe starter one day, but most likely a relief pitcher, Bruce Dark Gratterall of the Los Angeles Dodgers. The Dodgers feel like they're a case of the rich getting richer. They just locked up Mookie Betts long term, and they also got Bruce Dark Gratterall in this trade, who might turn out to be a filthy, filthy closer in the future. As a starter, it's not sure how well he's going to be able able to perform. He has some arm issues and he really only has two pitches, an insane fastball that throws like 105 miles an hour and has some sink. The dude throws absolute ched and a filthy, filthy power slider that sits in the high 80s, low 90s. Those two pitches right there are absolutely electric. And I think coming out of the bullpen this year for the Dodgers, he's going to be really valuable. That's a bullpen that maybe isn't necessarily one of the deepest in baseball. They have some good arms out there, but they need some help. And Bruce R. Gratterall, I think will be able to step in and give them that help they need. Not stretched out enough to be a starter yet in Major League Baseball, but as a reliever for the Dodgers, maybe you can get two innings out of him and you're going to get 110%. That is some filthy stuff. He pitched with the Twins a little bit last year and his ball just moves like a wiffle ball and he's throwing fastballs and sliders. His stuff's crazy good. It's always going to come down to health for him. If he can stay healthy, watch out for Bruzar Gratterall in 2020. Filthy out of the pen. The eighth player in today's video is also the eighth rated prospect in Major League Baseball, another flamethrower, Nate Pearson of the Toronto Blue Jays. Pearson is so good. In my eyes, he's definitely the best right-handed pitching prospect in Major League Baseball right now. His talent, his stuff is through the roof. And he's been showing that in summer camp. Like he should start the year with the Blue Jays on the roster. But of course, with service time manipulation, there's no reason for him to come up until like second week into the season so that they get an extra year of control over him. Now, like I said, Pearson has been dominating summer camp and that's because he throws absolute ched with a filthy slider, great changeup and good curveball. 102 consistently, consistently on the mound when he's a starter. Huge strikeout stuff, great control. Last year in the minors, he struck out 119, walking only 27. That's ridiculous. He had a 2.30 ERA with a 0.89 whip. No 
one's getting on base. He moved all the way from Class A Dunedin last year to AAA Buffalo, and he's going to be on the Major League squad this year. The Blue Jays have an extremely exciting young core. Vlad, Bo Bichette, Kevin Biggio, Guriel. Add Nate Pearson to that mix. This Blue Jays team might be one of the most fun teams to watch in the 2020 season. I know when he makes his starts, I will be watching. Can't miss kind of stuff from this kid. Well, unless you're at the plate, you're going to be missing a lot. The ninth player in today's video is my rookie of the year pick in the National League. Let's talk about Alec Bohm of the Philadelphia Phillies. Bohm has some special talent at the plate. 23 years old, drafted in 2018 out of Wichita State, and another one of these guys flying through the system because his talent is through the roof. Now, position-wise, he's a little bit of a man without a position. Not the most athletic guy, not very quick. He's a third baseman right now, but honestly, projects more as a first baseman, but they got Reese Hoskins there, so they need to find him a position because his bat is going to need to be in the lineup every single day. Last year in the minors, he had a 378 on base with a 518 slugging. That gives him an OPS above 900. 29 homers, 30 doubles, walked 57 times, striking out 73. That's great to see from a young hitter at the plate. Saw him play the other day against the Yankees in an exhibition game, and I was like, yup, this kid is going to be something special. And as a Mets fan, that terrifies me because I don't want the Phillies to get any better, but this kid's going to definitely make them better. He's too good to leave down. I think, again, you're going to see some service time manipulation. Maybe he doesn't start the year on the squad, but you should see him up at some point this year because his bat's too good. The Phillies are going to need it. You can't rock Gene Segura at third base. It's time for Alec Bohm in Philadelphia. Definitely need to watch this kid in 2020. This next player is not on the top 100 prospects for Major League Baseball, but I think that he has the chance to do something special in 2020, and that's going to be Justin Dunn of the Seattle Mariners. Now, I actually know Justin Dunn fairly well. Weird story between the two of us. One interviewed him this past spring training. Really nice guy. Follows me on Twitter. What's up, Justin? But I ended up finding out that I went to Cooperstown when I was 12, played against the team and him. That team ended up winning the tournament. We used to cross paths all the time playing like club and AAU baseball. Weird coincidence. Doesn't mean that he's going to be necessarily good, but I thought I'd share. Now, why I think he's going to be good is because he's actually a good pitcher. Product of the Mets obviously went over in the trade where they also got Kalanick. I don't want to talk about that too much. Nightmares. And he's really improved his game in that year since going to Seattle. At first, I thought he was a guy who was maybe a back end starter, but I'm seeing the improvements. I'm seeing the growth from Justin Dunn that makes me believe he can be at least a two or three starter. He doesn't have that stereotypical ace stuff. He's not throwing 100 miles an hour, but this guy can definitely pitch really good slider. He's improving that curveball and changeup, starting to round out four pitches. Great control. Last year, he made four appearances in the major league level, six and two thirds innings. Had some trouble with the walks, but he's apparently fixed that this offseason, much more under control. And even then, when people were making contact with him, it wasn't very good. An average of 0.105 against him. And then in the minors in double A, he struck out 158, walking 39. That's a great great ratio. Opponents weren't hitting high against him. Low whip. And he's also playing in a very, very relaxed, no pressure situation in Seattle. I think he has a chance to really grow this year. Maybe even build towards a breakout season coming in 2021. I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye out for Justin Dunn this year. Which leads us now to our last and final player of today's video. And that's going to be the 17th overall prospect in Major League Baseball, Dylan Carlson of the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals better play Dylan Carlson to start the year. I'm currently recording this before opening day. But if by the time that this video is out, he's not starting, we got problems because he's so good. Last year, Carlson was ridiculous in the minors. He had a 372 on base with a 542 slugging, giving an OPS way above 900. 26 homers, 28 doubles, 8 triples, 20 stolen bases, plays a good outfield, switch hitting. I think this kid's talent is through the roof. That's not a bold statement, but I just want to repeat that because he is really good. And the Cardinals need outfielders. Good average, good power, good athlete, pretty good in the outfield as well. He's not a center fielder. He's definitely a corner guy. But for the Cardinals who have no outfield depth, who need some more bats in that lineup, Dylan Carlson, I think, can definitely be that spark of energy that they need. And he will also go out there every single day and just produce. He is a talented hitter, talented player. Got to find his way into the Cardinals starting lineup. And if not on opening day, you'll see him in a couple weeks. He's too good to not be a part of that team. So those are the 11 rookies you need to keep an eye out for in the 2020 season. So much talent. I mean, Luis Robert, Jesus Lazardo. the list goes on and on. And I couldn't even fit some of the players on there because then we'd have a video of like 35 players. But I'd love to know what you guys think about the rookies that I talked about down in the comment section below. Did I leave someone off that you thought should be on this? Let me know in the comments. Remember to leave a like on the video as well as subscribe to the channel. Drop me a follow on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch. All the social media links are in the description and make sure to check out PIA VPN link in the description as well. Thank you guys for watching. You know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video as well as this is my most recent upload. So click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow for another video. Bye.